Hello, everyone. Welcome to Van Chicagoland Stories, the podcast. I'm your host, Pico Stanis. This is episode 65, season three. Uh, we have an interesting show coming up. And uh, right now we're going to commercial. And this program is brought to you by Chiffon Margarine featuring Mother Nature. And this, is, this commercial is from the 1970s. So uh, today's date is uh, October 5th, 2021, and hope you can enjoy this commercial. Here we go. And Goldilocks said, who's been eating my porridge? Mother Nature, was this on the porridge? Yes, lots of my delicious butter. That's chiffon margarine, not butter. Margarine? Oh, no, it's too sweet, too creamy. Chiffon so delicious it fooled even you, Mother Nature. Oh, it's not nice to fool Mother Nature. If you think it's butter, but it's not, it's chiffon. Okay, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed that commercial for chiffon margarine. Um, during the 70s, they, they had a lot of commercials uh, that featured margarine, like, for example, uh, chiffon, imperial, parquet with the talking tub. <laughs> Those are my favorite. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and then, um, I don't know, there were others, like, on the market. Um, I can't think of them on the top of my head. I remember Promise. And most of these are still on the market, believe it or not. Uh, I still, when I go grocery shopping and go to the uh, dairy section, you would find, uh, oh, Blue Bonnet, of course. Just remembered, you know, and most of them are still there. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Um, I don't know if they change, uh, I don't use margarine much. Uh, I use uh, some imitation thing, tastes the same, but uh, they have other ones like, I can't believe it's not butter. You have that featuring Fabio. <laughs> so anyway, so that was a good uh, commercial from Chiffon. The, the actress is, her, her name is Dina Dietrich, and uh, she died about a few years ago. But she wasn't featured in a lot of TV shows, but she's that's her most famous role as Mother Nature in the uh, Chiffon Margarine commercials. Okay. So uh, today I will discuss three things. Um, one is... Screaming Yellow Theater, uh, 1800 North Clybourne Avenue, uh, the shopping center, and uh, the closing of Riverview Park in Chicago. Uh, let's start with a, uh, let's see, we'll start with uh, Riverview Park. We'll do that. No, we won't. I'm sorry. We'll do Screaming Yellow Theater. We'll be, that'd be very interesting. Um I wrote a story about uh, the 50th anniversary of the show. It aired on WFLD TV, Channel 32 in Chicago uh, at 1030. And the story was published on my blog, Fan of Chicago Land blog, on August 16, 2020. If you can uh, go to my blog, do a search of Screaming Yellow Theater on the bottom, you will find it and read it. And uh, it was hosted by Jerry G. Bishop, and he was an employee of the station at channel 32 for many years and uh the show debuted on the same day as creature features on wgn tv channel 9 on september 19th 1970 and uh the first movie that shown i think it was called hold that ghost i believe i have to make sure i think it is that and it featured the bowery boys and uh Bella Lugosi, not in his Dracula role, but uh, he played a gangster, and uh, that was that was kind of odd because it wasn't really a very scary movie. It had scary elements, but it had comedy in there, you know, just like on Creature Features, he featured um, Abbott and Costello, me Frankenstein, Doctor Jekyll, and Mister Hyde, The Mummy, and so forth. And uh, first, when the show of when the show Screaming Yellow Theater first aired uh there was no host uh you just began to show movies then the following year they hired uh jerry g bishop and he he hosted the show as sven Gooley, and he dressed up like a hippie talk told corny jokes and talked like bella lugosi and uh i didn't watch the show much 
Um, actually, uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? You know, what I just thought of something. I made a mistake. It did not. Uh, it did not premiere on the same night as Creature Features because Creature Features. Uh, my apology. It uh, start. It aired in September nineteenth. This started September eighteenth on a Friday. So this was Friday nights, and Creature Features was on Saturday. My bad. And uh, so anyway, let's get back to we'll go back to Jerry G. Bishop. Uh, he dressed. You know, he was Sanguli. He was a hippie, you know, and uh, I watched the. Sh- I remember watching the show a couple of times, um, but I remember the movies they played. Uh, but I did see Sanguli little, maybe here and there. Um, I didn't know who he was when I was little. I was in grade school. And uh, let's see, the movies they showed, they were not from Universal Studios. No, they didn't have the rights. Uh, Creature Features did. And uh, the movies they showed, they were mostly from overseas, and they were low budget. And there were some from, uh, you know, from America. Uh, one of the movies I remember a few. I'll read them off. There, this was featured on my article. It was Black Sunday? I think it starred Barbara. Uh, I forgot her name. Barbara something. Uh, Barbara Steele, I think. Uh, there was a couple of uh, horror movies from Japan called The Manster, and uh, I think that was like, uh, he, it was a two-headed uh, monster. Well, uh, there was a man, I, I don't know what happened, I forgot how, what the movie was about, but there was a gr- there was a head growing out of his shoulder, which was pretty gross <laughs> to me, but it's interesting, and uh, the other one was The Attack of the Mushroom People. Now, that was that one I liked, you know, uh, I think it was about uh, some people that their plane crashed on a remote island, and uh there were mushrooms growing, and uh, once they started eating them, I think they were under a spell, uh, but they were monsters. I don't know if they turned it into mushrooms. I don't remember. i got to watch the movie. Anyway, the other movies, uh, they were from England, of course, and uh, I me- uh, there was The Horrible Dr. Hitchcock. I remember that, and uh, I can't think of the top of my head. Uh, and then two from here, there was like the... Uh, Frankenstein's daughter, the, the daughter of Dr. Jekyll, and also Blood of Dracula. <laughs> and that one I remember fondly. It was about this teenager. And uh, she was dropped off at a boarding school, more like dumped, from her father and new bride. Because uh, they were going on their honeymoon, they don't want to deal with her. And she, and she had anger issues. And uh, she wasn't accepted uh, at the school. You know, she was teased and bullied, and uh, and the only friend was there was the headmistress and this uh, teacher, and this teacher uh, had uh, some uh, became friends with her, and she sh- and explained about uh, the some sort of power that you that you release your anger. She was like a scientist or like a psychologist, and she showed uh, the girl. Her name was Sandy, I believe. And she showed her an amulet, and the amulet was from the Carpathian Mountains, and that's like where Dracula was from, more like Transylvania. And uh, she hypnotized her, and the place, you know, first she placed the amulet and did that, and then, uh, you know, the movie was kind of corny. They played like old fifty songs, and then at the end, uh, her anger uh, was released, and she turned into this beast. And she attacked uh, a few of the students. Uh, her face wasn't shown, not uh, until almost at the end. You know, there were a couple scenes like that. I want to—I don't want to spoil the movie. You know, if you want to see it, so it was interesting because that kind of movie. Um, there was also I was a teenage werewolf, and there was uh, I was a teenage Frankenstein. But I don't know why they didn't call it I was a teenage vampire because she was a vampire in the movie. So they just called it Blood of Dracula. I'll go figure. Anyway. Back to the um, Screaming Yell Theater. Um, he met, He was the first one that mentioned Berwin. That's what uh, now Svengulli does. You know, he was son of Svengulli, now Svengulli played by Rich Koss. And uh, the characters he had were Zelda. She was a smart mouth, disem- disembodied skull. And Durwood the dummy, a wooden ventriloquist dummy. I think there were other characters like that. And the theme song of Screaming Yell Theater was, uh, it was from 1958. And it was called Rumble by Link Ray and the Rays, I think. 
I think so. I, I could be wrong. Uh, his Ray Men, excuse me. My bad. Anyway, uh, back to the back to Sanguli. Uh, the sh- it lasted for a few years. Uh, the show ended September 7, 1973, but they, they repeat the movies all the time, just like Creature Features. You know, it was like a cycle. He also did uh, skits and uh, he had guest stars. Uh, you know, the difference between that and Creature Features, there was no host. There was a host in Creature Features briefly, but. I don't think I remember anyone remembered that. I don't know who it was. So. Anyway, uh, so on Creature Features, it ended on uh, September 1973. And uh, Jerry G. Bishop uh, worked on radio for a few years. Uh, he did other stuff during that time when he was Fanguli. He hosted the uh, Musk, he hosted uh, telethons. You know, he was on the Muscular District Telethon. He, and, uh, for one hear, he was a very nice man. You know, very talented. And then he moved to San Diego in 1978, and uh, he did a, he co-hosted a morning show, and he did that for over 10 years. And an interesting story about uh, Jerry G. Bishop, uh, when I was working in American Express Travel, I used to travel to San Diego uh, on my vacations. I went there every year for, like, for five years. Uh, visit Comic-Con International. It was a big, huge Comic-Con convention that's still there. I went there for about uh, th- two days, and uh, I was there all day, you know, going through, uh, searching comics, um, walking around, seeing guests. You know, it's a lot of fun. It's a huge place, and it's I enjoy it. I love it there. And uh, I was hungry uh, after I relaxed when I came back to my hotel. So I went to this restaurant, and it was uh, called the Greek Island Cafe. And... Uh, I walked in, and at the cash register, it was Jerry G. Bishop. <laughs> I had no idea he was there. <laughs> so I looked at him, and I looked at a picture of him on the wall, and then Sven Gulli, and go, oh, it's you. <laughs> it's you. And then I introduced myself, and uh, he was very polite, you know, and he asked me where I'm from. I'm from Oakland, and uh, he says, oh, you're a Southsider. You're a Sox fan. I told well, no, I don't watch baseball. Well, he didn't seem disappointed. That's okay. <laughs> he was very nice, and I, I, and then I placed my order, and uh, we talked for a moment, and uh, he was very nice, and I didn't want to uh, bother him. I was not being like Lucy. You know, like in a Lucy episode, you're know, like stuck in a celebrity. And uh, yeah, and then uh, I asked him one question, like, who was the one that created the talking skull? And of course, it was Zelda. And he says, I was. It was not Rich Cause. <laughs> you know, and uh, so I never saw him again, you know, and uh, because when I went there a couple of times and I went to the restaurant, uh I didn't see him, so because his uh, his sons ran the place, I believe. No, his son and daughter, excuse me. And uh, they both closed in 2018, and Jerry G. Bishop died on September 15, 2013. And uh, that was sad, because he was a well-known celebrity in the Chicagoland area, in the media, you know, and uh, some people still remember the show, and they remember the sound effects, and it's still used to this day on Son of Svenguli, which is called Svenguli, you know, with uh, the off-camera voices and um, sound effects, you know, and then um, Svengu- Svenguli, Jerry G. Bishop came out of a coffin, so did uh, Rich Cos. he did that, so it was an interesting show. Very nice. And uh, he was, like I said before, he was a nice man. So I wrote a story about uh, him and the show on my blog. And I also created a video. It's on my YouTube channel. If you check it out, it's there. Okay. Now we'll talk about something else. Uh, I'm going to talk about 1800 North Clybourne. And uh, that's a shopping center. And it's in the Clybourne Corridor area. Of the north on the north side of Chicago, right near Lincoln Park, and it's an interesting story about this. Um, before this build, uh, this place was a uh, mall. It was a factory making springs, I think maybe mattress strings, and then it it was turtle wax. Yeah, it was turtle wax, and I remember I I think it's the same place where I've seen photos 
where there's a huge statue of the turtle standing there. It must be that one, uh, unless it was uh, located elsewhere. And it was a three-level place, and uh, the Turtle Wax uh, Company closed uh, probably in the 70s, I could imagine. And uh, so uh, the area was, uh, I would say, getting yuppified at the time, like in the late 80s. And uh, I had a friend who lived around that area. He lived there all his life, and he said the neighborhood changed drastically because I worked with him in City Hall in the late in the mid 80s and uh, he tell i stayed there one day and uh yeah the neighborhood changed the property values went up and uh he stayed there as long as well he got married and he stayed as long as he could and uh he just left and he sold it i've got good money for that you know because uh i saw his house recently and it's changed drastically and so is the neighborhood anyway um so the, the mall opened around eh, probably 1988, 88, 89. And then uh, they opened the Goose Island Brewery and their other, um, uh, they had some stores and there was a, a pool room and it was called Muddler's Pool Room. A lot of people remember that. Yeah, they do. And uh, they also had Par Excellence. And it was like a mentor golf course. That sounds interesting. And uh, they also had a, uh, they opened the Willow Street Carnival. It was like a cabaret, cabaret style theater. And they proposed to open a 10 screen cinema, you know, like a movie theater. That didn't happen, but they moved, They opened one in Webster Square. That's a little up north near Southport and, uh, what's that street? Yeah, Southport and uh, Clybourne. I run there. Belden is the name. I think it's Belden. I think that's the name of the street. I could be wrong. Anyway, uh, so the, the place is still there, but uh, the theater's there, and now they open a Barnes & Nobles, and that's the bookstore still there. Anyway, uh, so I have a list of... Uh, the shops right here and it was from an ad from the chicago tribune and i'll read them off and uh so they had uh for example they had ancient echoes jewelry and art they had a barber's bookstore which is still around they had a travel agency called global travel they had uh, gift shops uh mask with m-a-s-q-e the soul women's clothing you know and then uh they had hair salon, you know, a lot of jewelry stores there, a lot of them. And uh, they also uh, they also had the miniature golf course, which I mentioned, but they call it Art Golf. It must have changed. And uh, let's see. Let's tell us. And uh, they had a restaurant called Metropol- Metrop- Metropolis 1800. Excuse me. They had that, you know, and uh, parking was free. Believe it or not, you know, every time you go, par- you know, if you go, if you drive in the city and you want to go shopping, you have to park your car and pay in the meter. And uh, the property was foreclosed. Uh, there was the recession at the time in 1990, and uh, they closed a lot of stores and the building was uh, was sold. And they demolished most of the building and they left three buildings separated by the parking lots. But other stores moved in, like Beth, Bad, and Bed, Bath, and Beyond. Excuse me. And they had uh, also they have now Patagonia and Gap Kids. But uh, most of, the only original tenant there is Goose Island Brewery, and it is still there. So if you're in the mood to have a beer, <laughs> if you're thirsty, you know, drop by. You know, I w- I always want to go see it, but I didn't get a chance to go inside the place because when I visited the area uh i just drove by it and i was fascinated by it you know it's uh, interesting it was an interesting shopping center okay so the next thing i will talk the last thing excuse me the last thing i will talk about is riverview park and uh i mentioned riverview park uh many times on my program but i'm going to talk about the closing of this place because on october 3rd 1967 that was officially closed um, but, uh, 1967 was the last year. Uh, they were planning on to reopen it in the following year, but that, that never meant to be. And, uh, 
when it closed on October 3rd, it was sold. And uh, they dismantle all the rides. And, uh, you know, they were sold to other people. They had an auction. I remember that. And uh, because I posted a photo of that uh, not too, uh, a while back. And it listed all the items of the the rides and the <clears throat> excuse me and the attractions there. And then, uh, so that was a sad day. And there were rumors of why the why the park closed uh, because of uh, it was violence, gang activity. It could be true. I don't know because uh, I was three years old when it closed, so I never went there. I wish I did, you know. But my parents didn't drive. So, uh, and they were unfamiliar with this place. No one ever told them about it until uh, later on. Uh, I read about a review park, and uh, believe it or not, uh, in college, right after I uh, left Daly College and I graduated from Bogan High School, I enrolled in DeVry Institute of Technology in March of 1983, and it is on the property. The school is on the Riverview Park property, and I went there for three years. It never dawned on me it was there. <laughs> you know, I never had a chance to, like, feel the atmosphere of the park because I was too busy studying, going to school, you know, meeting people. And, uh, you know, and uh, on the property, there's a, uh, it's a police station and there's a shopping center and Lane Tech is a little north of that. WGN is a little more north than that. It's on Addison. And the park bordered on Belmont and Western and Campbell and Roscoe Streets. And uh, so uh, most of the rides are gone. And the only one that, that remained was the carousel. And that was at six and they moved to Six Flags uh, America, Great America in Georgia. So uh, I went to Atlanta w one day. I never thought of, never thought about that. I wanted to go see it, you know, but uh, maybe someday I will. I would love that. So that's the only ride uh, that I know of that moved there. And uh, so that was a sad day for everyone because, you know, it is, that subject is still talked about to this day. You know, younger generation, they go to they go to Great America in Gurney, Illinois, or uh, there was Kitty Land before, but that closed about over ten years ago in Melrose Park, and uh, so we only have one big uh, amusement park, which is Six Flags. But now they open water parks around the Chicagoland area, which is nice. But you know, I'm not a not that kind of fan <laughs> doing that. I'm too old, you know, to slide down in a water slide like that. Eh, no thanks. <laughs> Anyway, and uh, so, you know, like this day, uh, Review Park is a, was a wonderful place, you know, and I created a video on YouTube. You can check it out under my, uh, under my name, P. Castanis. You know, I, I created it about two years ago. Okay. So that's it for this show. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a couple things before I sign off. Uh, yesterday was my birthday. I, I'm 58 years old. Uh, thank you for the well wishes from everyone on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, I appreciate them all. And I posted uh, a photo of my birthday cake my mother made. She made a wonderful dinner. It was a meatloaf out of this world. I loved it. And uh, yeah, so uh, it was very quiet, low key. Just me, my brother, and my mom. You know, and then uh, then I thanked everyone from Facebook and Twitter. And uh, let's see. Oh, and one note. Um, this is I'm scheduled to speak on the radio this Saturday on WCPT 820 AM at 10 o'clock on the show. Where are they now? Uh, so far, so good. I am going to be on the show and I will talk about Riverview Park. <coughs> Excuse me. Me. Uh, perhaps other things. We'll see. So it'll be fun. So I got to do my homework again. You know, sometimes I love I love talking about the River Park, but I forget things. So I have to read the, and do some research on that. And uh, let's see. So so it'll be this Saturday, this Saturday at 10 o'clock on WCPT 820 AM. Uh, I don't think I'll be doing a podcast. Uh, if it's changed, I will. I'll probably do one Sunday. 
So if you can uh, tune in and listen to me speak, uh, that'd be awesome. Uh, I think I'll have a good time. It'll be a full hour. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, so this is Pete Costana signing off. This is episode 65, season 3 of Band of Chicago Land Stories, the podcast. And bye-bye for now for me. And here is Ray Rayner saying bye-bye for now. Take it away, Ray. Take care, everybody. We have to go. Bye, bye, bye.